Greetings and salutations. Thank you for lending an ear to the voice of the times. Brought to you this Sunday, January 16, 2022, by Wilcon Depot, the country's leading home improvement and construction supplies retailer. Shop conveniently 24 7 with Wilcon Online Store. Just go to shop.wilcon.com.ph. For today's editorial, F. Shionel Jose was unafraid of truth. Remembering national artist for literature, F. Shionel Jose should not be like having a sense of the last song syndrome. Besides one of his final public comments, he was known as a consequential and prolific writer, having authored more than 35 books. Few other Filipino authors are so accomplished that they merit mention in international news or an obituary in the New York Times. Still, some remember Mr. Jose for a social media post not long ago. He stung people when he said Maria Ressa did not deserve the Nobel Peace Prize, which was awarded in recognition of her contributions to journalism. Perhaps in defense of the late Mr. Jose, a columnist from another daily said the national artist should be, instead, remembered for his body of work, for mentoring other writers, and even for his famous bookstore, Solidaridad. That columnist need not make excuses for Mr. Jose, who deserved praise for his courage to express an unpopular opinion. Some might even argue that he spoke the truth. The admirers of Ms. Reza should have expected Mr. Jose's comments if they were believers in free speech. That pillar in journalism is best described in a quote from Evelyn Beatrice Hall, an English writer who wrote under the pseudonym S.G. Talentire and who was known for her biography of Voltaire. She famously said, I disapprove of what you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. Those who disapproved of Mr. Jose's comments ought to reflect on that quote. They should have defended his right to express his opinion no matter how unpopular or politically incorrect it may have been for them. Of course, this applies if they actually grasp why Ms. Reza was awarded a Nobel. True Danger To recap, the contentious point among some Filipinos has to do with Ms. Reza's poor portrayal of the Philippines that some argue as self-serving. Mr. Jose posted, Philippine press is alive and well and not because of Maria Ressa. As if to drive the dagger deeper, he added, No writer is in jail. There is no censorship. President Rodrigo Duterte hasn't closed a single newspaper or radio station. The closure of ABS-CBN was made by Congress, which did not renew the ABS-CBN franchise. Naturally, Miss Ressa has a different opinion, and she is certainly entitled to that. But in her speech at a Nobel function, she herself weakened her merits in mentioning that more lawyers have been killed in the Philippines than journalists. Curiously, no one seems to be handing out awards for officers of the court. Ms. Ressa's own Rappler reported that 65 lawyers, prosecutors, and judges had been killed during President Duterte's term as of September 15, 2021. In the same period, 22 journalists had been killed, the website added. But other sources cited a lower figure for journalists, including UNESCO, or United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. Around the region, we see evidence supporting Mr. Jose's point of view. In Hong Kong, journalists are being arrested in increasing numbers. In strife-torn Myanmar, journalists covering protests risk getting shot by soldiers or the police. In Thailand, criticizing the monarchy is a crime. And elsewhere in Southeast Asia, laws mislabeled as national security are used to suppress media. Against that backdrop, the Philippines actually shines. Naturally, Filipino journalists are not without problems. The Middle Times, for instance, was slapped with more libel cases during this administration than in the past. And undeniably, journalists have died. That does not make the Philippines, however, the most dangerous country for journalists. That unfortunate distinction belongs to Mexico, according to the International Press Institute. Afghanistan was next on its list, followed by the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Does the ranking qualify the Philippines as safe for journalists? Not exactly, but the statistics suggest that other professionals have it worse. So what is the truth? Criminality seems to be the problem. Unlike lawyers and other crime victims, journalists have a bully pulpit. And if only Mr. Jose were alive, he might have challenged that. The fact that he could have would underscore the point. And that's the editorial for Sunday, January 16, 2022. For more news and information, get a copy of the Manila Times on print, subscribe to our digital edition, or log on to www.manilatimes.net. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and listen to The Voice of the Times.